Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric with Two Guys in a Cooler and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how we deep clean our dry curing cabinet. This is a video we've gotten a lot of requests for, but unfortunately, it's not something that needs to be done very often, maybe once every two to three years, unless something radical happens. Uh, but today is the day that we're gonna do ours and I'm gonna take you through the entire process as we strip it bare and then reassemble it. We use our dry curing cabinet to make everything from cheese, salami, different forms of dry cured meats. And so if you're into cheese making and you have a cheese cave, or you're into making dry cured meats and you have some sort of a commercially obtained or home built dry curing chamber, or if you're looking to get into those crafts, this video is for you and you're definitely gonna wanna stick around to the end. Let's get started. All right, let's open up the chamber and see what we're working with. For me, a telltale sign that we're gonna have to do a deep clean is when we start to see black mold. So I've got black mold there on the wall. The grates are a little funky, you know, your meat's gonna drip. And so we're gonna clean those as well as those brackets. Uh, the top of the fridge has got mold on it. And look in the vents right there. You can see that mold growing in the very back. That's not good. That's gonna circulate through our chamber. And so we do want to do uh, a strip down. We're basically going to remove that back panel, remove the grates and the brackets, just take everything down and bring it down to bare bone. So let's get started. We're going to first unplug our chamber. Very important. You don't want to do this while it's plugged in. And then we're going to try to move it to an area that's a little more accessible. So right now it's kind of tucked back into a corner. Because we're doing a deep clean, everything inside this chamber is going to get removed. Like I said, we're going to go bare bones on this thing. So cables, racks, humidifier, dehumidifier, all that's coming out. And then we'll get the cleaning. Okay, the back panel gets unplugged and we are just about ready. Now, every fridge build is gonna be a little different. So if you're doing a deep clean on yours, be patient and um, be easy with some of the different pieces. They may be connected. Let's take a look at that back panel. You can see right off the bat that computer fan that basically moves air around in the freezer and the fridge is loaded with mold, a lot of mold on that styrofoam. And so we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew these two pieces and you'll be able to see how it's connected. So. Notice how that back panel is basically just a series of chambers uh, between the freezer and the fridge, and it has got a lot of black mold on it, so we definitely have to remove all of that. The way this fridge works is as the fan circulates the air, it runs through these chambers. This little piece here, you know, regulates how much air goes into the refrigerator, and that's basically it. And the reason we don't want black mold is because all of that stuff gets circulated around in the chamber and gets spread to our salami and charcuterie. So we're just gonna remove the fan from that little hole, set it to the side, and I think the first thing we're gonna do is take those styrofoam pieces. Now, this is just the styrofoam that makes up the back panel. There's no electrical components here, and we're gonna spray them down with a bleach solution. So basically, this is a one to 16 bleach solution, so two ounces for every quart, and uh, that should be sufficient enough to not only kill mold, but to go ahead and just get rid of the mold stain that's on that styrofoam. And like I said, we're just gonna spray it 
completely down and we're going to let it soak. So that's the first piece. This is the second piece. I mean, look how dingy and uh, nasty it is. So this is definitely long overdue. Uh, deep cleaning your chamber isn't something you have to do often. And typically, you're only going to have to do it if there's a problem. Like I said earlier, mine was unplugged. And uh, when you don't have that air circulation and that humidity in check, you are going to get a lot of uh, unwanted mold growth. And that's what happened in my case. So this is the temperature controller for the refrigerator. Notice we've got some mold right there at the vent holes, which isn't a surprise. So we're going to go ahead and spray that down, too. We just want to make sure we don't spray down any of those um, circuit chips or anything like that. And we're gonna let that soak. Now, while that's soaking, we've got our grates and our brackets from the inside. These are all stainless steel. And over time, you know, with your meat and the drippings and whatnot, they are gonna get funky. So we're gonna give those a nice cleaning as well with some warm, soapy water. Our grates are clean, our brackets are clean. Let's go ahead and spray down the inside of our refrigerator. We're still gonna be using that one to 16 bleach solution and I am literally gonna spray every possible service. I'm just gonna you know, watch out for any of the electrical components, but in between the fins, along the door, the back panel, the top, the bottom, uh, the entire thing, and we're gonna let it sit uh, in there for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, after 30 minutes is up, we're gonna come in with some fresh paper towels and just give the entire thing a nice wipe. All right, the inside of the fridge is nice and clean. Let's go ahead and take a look at that back panel, that styrofoam plate, and it looks like the mold has been completely removed. We don't even have any stains of mold, which is great. So I'm just gonna give it a quick scrub and rinse. And you do wanna be careful with any styrofoam pieces because they can break easily depending on how yours is built. And that could mess up the way that your chamber circulates air. Let's go ahead and look at the fan. And for these next pieces of uh, equipment that we're gonna be cleaning, what I found that comes in incredibly handy are Clorox disinfecting wipes. And that's basically what I'm using right here. And so I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of them during this next stage. So for the fan, we just wanna remove any of the mold on it. Now it looks like the mold is our, you know, beneficial penicillium nalgia vensi, but in this case, I'm just gonna start over. When you're doing a deep clean, you're basically killing all life inside your refrigerator. And you're gonna start with a clean slate. Now, part of that breaks my heart, but another part of me knows that it's necessary. I do want to make sure to clean all the cables on all of the equipment that's going to be in the refrigerator. We don't want any unwanted mold spores to be hanging around. Let's take a look at our dehumidifier. This is a dehumidifier by Evadry. Brilliant for keeping your humidity in check. And just like before, we're going to start with the cables. Mold will grow on these cables. This one's black, so it's a little hard to see, but you'll see it on the humidifier here in just a minute. So once we uh, wipe it down with our wipes, and these are great wipes because they kill the mold, they disinfect, they do a nice job cleaning and uh, they're perfect for what we're doing here. All right, so let's go ahead and take the water reservoir out and give it a nice clean. I'm just gonna go ahead and soap the outside with warm, soapy water, and then we're gonna add a little bit of soap to the inside and then just make sure that we give it a shake. Now, this I usually clean pretty regularly, so it's not too dirty, but if it is super dirty for you, once you give it a nice clean, you may wanna do like a 50-50 vinegar rinse inside that dehumidifier and that'll help uh, disinfect it as well. So not a big deal. Or you could use your Clorox, you know, one to 16 ratio, pour it inside that basin and it'll disinfect anything that's inside of it. So that's done. Let's go ahead and clean the dehumidifier itself. And this can get gunky because, you know, mine's on the bottom, meat is dripping. And so it's going to inevitably get on those pieces of equipment. Uh, I'm using that warm soapy water once again to clean any of those nooks and crannies and notice on the inside of that dehumidifier right there where that heat plate is we've got cornmeal from when we did patina and all kinds of other crazy stuff so we're going to try to get as much of that out of there our goal here is tabula rasa so i'm going to clean all that 
cornmeal and gunk out of there. Uh, notice that filter plate was washed. That comes off of your dehumidifier in case you didn't know. And then we're just going to go ahead and pop it back on. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and just give it one final wipe. And we can set that to the side and move on to the humidifier. Humidifier does tend to get a little bit funkier uh, simply because it's got so much water in it. And that water is usually sitting inside that humidifier for, you know, depending on how big it is, you know, four weeks, six weeks. So we're going to empty it, wash it down with warm soapy water as well. When we remove the cap, you're going to notice that it has a thin slimy film on it. Very natural, especially when you're dealing with stagnant water. So we're going to make sure that we clean that real nice. We're going to empty out that humidifier and then clean out the inside. And this particular humidifier is unique in the sense that it has an enormous opening, one that's large enough for me to stick my arm in there and completely clean it out. Now, not all humidifiers are built like that. Matter of fact, some you might be able to get a brush in there if you can. Uh, if you cannot get your arm in there and the opening is relatively small, just try to clean it out as best you can. Maybe put some warm soapy water inside, give it a real good shake, and uh, that'll help break it apart. But here in a second, you're going to see what I like to do to finish up this process. I like to do a 50 50 vinegar water solution inside that base, and that's going to help disinfect everything. So this is a one gallon humidifier. So I've got two quarts of water, two quarts of vinegar, and we're going to go ahead and put the top back on it, or in this case, the bottom back on it and give it a nice little shake. So I like to let this sit for at least an hour, at least two hours. And uh, you're going to see what I do with it here in a minute, just to ensure that it's properly disinfected. Let's go ahead and look at the basin of the humidifier. Once again, we're going to start with that cable. You can see right there we've got black mold spots on the cable itself. So we do want to make sure we get all that. We want to wipe it down. And on this particular humidifier, it has a filter at the very bottom. So I'm just going to remove that filter, wash it with some warm soapy water, dry it off, and then replace it. And that's going to allow airflow to circulate through it more efficiently. Yours may or may not have a filter, but you know, you can always double check. And so there we go. It's nice and clean. Let's go ahead and put it back in and close it back off. All right. And uh, for the last little step, the part where the water typically sits in that humidifier does get relatively slimy. And so you do want to try to get into all those little cracks and um, areas that are difficult to get into uh, because this stuff will actually grow. I mean, it is like a living organism in there. So I just want to make sure that we try to get each one of those pieces. And then uh, once I get it nice and clean, we're going to go ahead and put the basin back on top. Now that basin's got that 50-50 vinegar water solution. We're going to put the top back on that humidifier, turn it on and allow it to run for a couple of hours. This is going to cycle that vinegar water solution through the humidifier, ensuring that the entire thing is properly disinfected. All right, now that that's done, let's look at our panels. We now need to start assembling everything. And don't let me fool you. This video is only 15 minutes of cleaning, but this process literally took me all day long. And so it is something that takes a little while, but you only have to do it once in a while. So we've got our fan on that top piece and we're just going to carefully line everything up so those chambers uh, can meet up organically. I'm not forcing anything. This slides in really, really easy. Once I get it put in place, we're going to go ahead and just put in the screws. Now, what I like to do here, because those screws will oxidize because we are maintaining a relatively high humidity in our chamber, is I'm going to cut some foil tape and just cover up each one of those screws so they don't rust on me. That really, that's about it. And in addition to those screws, I am gonna put some of that foil tape around the edges where those two pieces of styrofoam met, and that's just gonna keep any leaks from happening and allow that air circulation to be a little more efficient.
Our refrigerator is fully assembled, and the last thing that we need to do is just clean the cables, the extension cords that are going to control the humidifier, dehumidifier, and then of course our humidity and our temperature. This is a humidity controller from Auburn, and the temperature controller that I'm using is one from Johnson, and all I'm doing is wiping down the cables, just like before, making sure that there's no mold or dirt or anything like that on it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and clean the wires for the temperature controller, but it's really not that important because those wires are on the outside of the chamber. So, you know, clean them, don't clean them, it's up to you. Once we finish this last step, it's time to go ahead and place these back into the chamber. And this is why I typically don't recommend that you plug up the hole permanently with like great stuff or whatever that foam sealant is, because you will sometimes have to remove those cords, whether it's for calibration or whether it's for deep cleaning. And I find it just easier to, you know, backfill that with some paper towels and that seems to be sufficient. So let's go ahead and get our cables in there. There's our temperature controller and this is our fully cleaned, totally sanitized, dry curing chamber. The big question is right now, do you inoculate it with mold? Do you not inoculate it with mold? Well, in the next video, we're gonna cover that topic, so be sure to stick around for that. All right, folks, that's how I deep clean my dry curing chamber, and like I said in the beginning, this really isn't something that you have to do very often. You know, maybe once every two to three years, and really that's only if you have a problem. In my case, I had a lot of black mold growing, and you definitely don't want that in your chamber. So if you have black mold growing in your chamber, you definitely want to do a deep clean, start over, and uh, get that clean slate for your charcuterie. If you have any questions about deep cleaning your chamber, leave them in the comment section. And just remember that every refrigerator build is slightly different. So unless you've taken your fridge completely apart like we've done today, work slowly, be patient, and watch out for any wires because the last thing you wanna do is break your chamber during the process of cleaning it. I do wanna add one little thing because I don't think I covered it in the video. I do let my humidifier run for an hour or two with a 50-50 vinegar water mix, and that really kind of helps disinfect the entire thing. Uh, but before I put it in the chamber, I empty it out, I give it a rinse, and I put in some fresh water. So in case you had any questions about that. I hope you got something out of this video. And you know, just a final thought, if you have a dry curing chamber or a cheese cave, and you'd like to see more videos like this, you know, where we go behind the scenes and uh, get into the nitty gritty of how to get the most out of your dry curing chamber or cheese cave, show me by giving me a great big thumbs up and leaving me a comment below. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to stick around because we're gonna be talking about mold inoculation in the next video. And I've got a project lined up with my Biltong box that you're absolutely not gonna to wanna to miss. I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.